Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impart your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact this house, PO Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone number 0703 036369 0703 768119. Email address lsmedia at org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. First Corinthians 2, 6 to 10. How be we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes, of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the wisdom, the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I as nothing, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. So will you follow me quickly? to 2 Corinthians and I want you to take it from chapter 3 from 14 I read but their minds were blinded for until this day remained the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament which veil is done away in Christ but even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now, the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open faith, Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed, changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. May God cause His word to mix with faith in our hearts as we study tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Now we are dealing with expressing His glory. And this night, I want to be looking at expressing His glory progressively. Hallelujah. Expressing His glory, how? From one degree of glory to another. From glory to glory. Now, I'd like to quickly repeat the passage that we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. The reason why I want to repeat that is because I want to set a perspective, trusting that the Holy Spirit will help you to have a clarity of what heaven is intending to make of your life. Sometimes, when you don't have a perspective of where you are going, 
when you do not have a clear insight into what God is about to make you or what God could make of your life, you may settle with those that are not going far. Are you hearing me? When you do not have a perspective of the potential that God has set for you, you might find yourself among mediocre. In fact, you may become a champion among the cripples. Hallelujah. When I first, when I finished secondary school, and in those days, even to have work was a great achievement. Isn't it? It was. And there were jobs. And here was I. Very, very brilliant when it comes to mathematics. And then there was this local school's board that were recruiting auxiliary teachers. And our salary that time was 17 pounds, 10 shillings. And it was a very, very exciting thing to start any 17 pounds, 10 shillings. That was 35 naira in those days. And we went for this interview. And when they saw my result, they said, Ah, you have A in mathematics. A in this one, oh God, we need you to come and teach mathematics in our school. And I was feeling great. And I was going to settle down. And I remember my first transistor radio that I bought. I was a local champion in the village. And in the school where they posted me, it's in the village. And because they have never had anybody to help them coach their children in arithmetic. Do, do, you want, do you think they want me to go? No way. They offered me two different accommodations. They said, Tisha, if you don't want this, this one is here. Are we together? Are you hearing me? I'm dealing with an issue tonight. Because if you're going to express his glory from one degree to another, the first thing that must happen to you, you must have a perspective. You must have a long, a long perspective that helps you to see what is it that you can become. What is it that God has in mind for you? How far could you go with God? Now, why they gave me two accommodation? Two different families were cooking for me. Morning, afternoon, night. I don't need to touch that my 35 naira. I was eating. And because if I don't eat from this family, they thought I was annoyed. So I had to learn how to demarcate my stomach. I eat because I had to eat double breakfast, double lunch, double dinner. And why I am there, because there is no light once it is 7 p.m. They all sat, you know, in compounds and telling stories. 
And they said, Tisha, Tisha. It was very popular. <laughs> and then, they arranged something else for me. That was when my eyes began to open. What were they arranging now? They were arranging girls for me. And there was this young girl that they had arranged. Her mother would quietly push her. When it's somewhere around 6.30, she said, go and carry food for Tisha. And when she brings this food, I thought she would carry, I mean, she would take, drop the food and go. Oh, she would sit down there. I said, Tisha, <laughs> how you doing now? I said, I'm fine. One day she dressed so loosely, I think she was just coming from the bathroom. I was coming straight to Tisha's room. It was then my eyes opened and said, Eh? Is it, could it be possible that they are arranging my burial ground in this village? What are they planning? So when I stood up and I said, Get out of this place! Do you think this is where I'm going to end my life? I thought I was only rebuking a girl. I didn't know that the story has reached her parents. They came back in the morning and said, Tisha, what have we done? Have we offended you? I said, for what? You are giving me food. You gave me free house. Whenever I'm going home over the weekend, they gave me yam. So, what have we done? Eh? And, uh, you know, she came and said, the way you... You made your face as if we have offended you. I said, no, you didn't offend me. She, 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 she's misbehaving. They said, like how? I said, imagine how she just dressed loosely and she's coming to, to my house carelessly like that. Eh? They said, Tisha, that's no problem now. I said, eh. <laughs> That was when I knew if I'm going to become anything in my lifetime, I need to start moving out of that village. I don't need to pay for accommodation. Let me inform you, brother. For any man that God wants to take on a long journey, don't let the devil provide accommodation for you halfway. Are, we, are you hearing me? Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I want to spend a little time on that before I go on to now, how to progressively enter into that glory from one degree of glory to another. 1 Corinthians 2 says, As it is written, verse 9, I have not done what? Has not seen, nor hear, had, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has done what? Has prepared. So let's quickly take very, very quick analysis of that Bible verse because it's only that verse and verse 10 that I want to speak about before I go away from there. Number one, let me inform you that what God has prepared, take note of the word, has prepared. There is something that God has done what? Prepared for you. Unfortunately, you don't know it because 
you are not careful to look for it. But God has prepared something about you and for you. And look how the word of God put it. I have not seen it. Whatever you have seen is far, 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 far inadequate compared with what heaven is keeping in store about it. Are you hearing me? Let me inform you. When I told those people that I have a dream for my life, and I began to sing that song to myself. I have a dream for my life. I am going on a long journey. My life will not waste. I have a dream for my life. They say, where are you going? Where are you going? Don't you know that this is a good place? You have a house. And we are ready to be cooking for you as many food as you want to eat. And if you want girls, they are here. And your salary is here, 17 pounds 10. Where are you going? So that I will not go anywhere. They were giving me yam every weekend. You know what touched my mind? Every time I'm driving and somehow the road has not been constructed because in those days there were no roads. To get to the village you trek for at least 8 kilometers. Whenever there will be a vehicle it will be Gongoro vehicle that comes once in a week on market days. And that's where they were expecting me to be a local champion. I passed through that, I mean, that village now and what touched me is that it hasn't changed. The house that they were offering me was not plastered then, it has not been plastered now. The men that wanted to give me their daughter, they may have died right now. I don't know what those girls will have become. How oh, do you think you will have met me if I had settled in that place? Talk to me, please. You will never. But because I have not seen, they cannot see, let me inform you, Many, many people, they have not seen where God is carrying you. That is why they are not qualified to evaluate you. Don't let any man who does not have the perspective of where your life is going under God, don't let them evaluate you. They don't have what it takes to discuss your journey. But as a young person, many times, because of immediate, immediate pleasure, immediate satisfaction, you meet people that are already going down. And they put their hands on your neck and say, let's go together. No, I don't go together. Do you know before I can go with any man, do you know what I normally do? Can I tell you what I do? These are my quiet secrets. I don't go with pastors or preachers. Anyhow. A man may look great today. He may look very tall, Gagana. And everybody is looking and says, oh, that's a great man. 
That is not what I look for. Do you know what I look for? I look at his direction. You come. Come, yes. Now stay there, stay there. Oh, they won't see us here. Where will they see us? Because I want them to see us. Come here. No, no, we cannot sign the pulpit now because we are in a journey. You go down there. Go down, go down. Then, I want you to start coming. Do you know where he is? Do you know that where he is now? I am still taller than him. Eh? And he might meet me here. And I say, how are you, young man? Are you doing okay? That's great. Where are you going? That's where I'm coming from. And you know there's nothing there. Let's just go together. What has happened right now? Do you see a man of the wrong direction bringing down? This man may look small today. I have not seen. He has not heard what it could become in God. But now you see somebody, senior friend, putting hand on his neck and say, let's go down. So many young people that would have been great for God, men have changed their direction. And they never rose to their potential before they began to go down. So when I meet people on the road, and you will meet many people on your journey, as you meet them, before you join their company, look at their direction. They may look tall, but where are they facing? There are many people, they look nice, but they are going down. They are on the path of finishing. A man that wants to move from one degree of glory to another does not keep company with men who are on their finishing. There are men that were very popular some years ago. And I wanted to go with them. I want to follow them. And God said, can I talk to you? I said, yes, sir. He said, look at that man. Don't go with him. I said, what's a great man? He's the one everybody is talking about. And you are using him. The Lord whispered to me and said, we have closed his fire. His fire has been what? Closed. Follow me. So if you have a person who is climbing up and the more you see him the more he gives you perspective for what you can become that's the kind of person you can do what you can keep company with <laughs> hallelujah god bless you you won't go down with me isn't it the lord bless you now what you don't understand is this do you know that when you are riding a car and you are at 120 kilometers per hour. Even if you press brake, does it stop immediately? When it begins to apply brake, does the velocity arrive at zero immediately? Do you know that his velocity will begin to reduce from 120 to 100? Why? He is no more accelerating. He's planning to stop. He will still be faster than someone else. Am I right? Let me inform you tonight. The speed of a man 
is a scalar quantity. What's a scalar quantity? Eh? You don't know that? A scalar quantity is a quantity that only has magnitude without direction. Many times, you look at men that are no more vectors. A vector quantity is dynamic. Scalar quantity is static. The reason is because what you have seen there has no direction. If I'm going to express God's glory in my life from one degree of glory to another, the first thing that I must check what is God's perspective? I hear people say, well, nobody has done that before. So because it has never been done, nobody can do it. I say, no, 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 no. That's the language of those that are finished. Not for me. Not for me. Because the fact that people have not seen it before is actually what makes it interesting. Because the Bible says, eyes have not done what? See. Yeah, has not heard. Neither has he entered into the heart of man. What God? What God? And I want you to see that scripture very well. What God? Did he say what God we prepare? What did God say? What God has prepared. There is something heaven has prepared to make you. The other day, maybe last, just a few days ago, I was in a meeting and a brother was speaking and he went to one passage. And I was listening to him. I was taking my notes. And the Holy Spirit suddenly opened my eyes. And I saw something. I said, yes. He had finished what he was saying. But God was hanging me down there. And I was hearing how Paul was talking. And he was saying those of us that were called according to the divine purpose. I said, ah, I'm not purposeless. Can I inform you? I am not purposeless. As you see me like this, there is something. You know why I am taking my time to share with you? I told you already yesterday that when I see men in your class, in your category, destiny lies ahead of you. Am I right? That's why. To talk about expressing God's glory is for you now. Some people they may have good aspiration. They may have great desire. They may have wonderful dreams. But when I look at their time, I say, sir, even when the Holy Ghost comes, you know what the Bible says? The old men shall do what? They will dream dreams. Only the young men shall do what? They will see vision. Vision. But that's why the age, the, the bracket of age you are now is highly contested. This is why there is a great contest because 
each one of you sitting here, if nothing tampers with what God wants you to be and you are in the correct direction, each one of you, you are an explosive. You are an explosive. Satan fears what you could become. He fears it. The devil says, and that's why I want to inform you that if there's any project the devil has, it's for the young people. Am I right? All that he does, do you know that if he doesn't have the young people, his program will collapse. That's where we have struggle here. Hallelujah. When God wants a man to press onto expressing his glory from one degree to another, he must give him a perspective. Now, do you know what God was giving Joseph? Do you know what God was giving Joseph? When he was with his brother. When he was dreaming those dreams. When he was seeing himself gathering bundles and his brothers, their own bundles were falling before him. When he was seeing the stars, the sun and the moon, and how all the eleven stars were bowing to his own. Do you know what God was simply doing for Joseph? Do you know what God was doing? God was beginning to open to him what heaven has prepared for his life. God wanted that young man to know that even though you were born in this village, you were not meant to die in this village. And even though in your family you are number 11, I don't plan you to be number 11 for life. You see, all this number 1 to 10 that you see, today they are number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4, number 5, number 6, number 7, number 8, number 10. But that's a temporary number. Today, you may bend down and greet them and say, Welcome, sir. But if you go with the way I'm leading you, it's a temporary thing. They will soon turn and begin to bow to you. You know, when it was being said, it was impossible. Am I right? It looked totally unrealistic. In fact, when Joseph told that dream to his senior brothers, they laughed. They said, <laughs> Oh, dreamer. How can people that have no perspective, they think because I'm small today, I will be small tomorrow. People that cannot see, they think because I am feeble today. That I am born to be feeble for life. Are you hearing me? People that don't understand, they look at me and they say, Is it not there? Is it not? Is it not? And they talk as if, as if I'm a, as if I'm a scalar quantity. They don't know a man that has life and has a direction. You don't pin him down. He's moving. Tell somebody, you are not color. 
God is making you a vector. A vector. The Bible said, because eyes have not seen, ear has not heard, neither has he entered the heart of any man what God has prepared for you. My first reaction is this. And I'm, that's what I say. I say, please, you don't know where I'm going. So you cannot draw the map. Eh? I am a very gentle man, you know. And I don't like quarreling with people. But I don't allow you. No matter what you think you know, to draw the map of my life that you don't know. So when they say, I remember that we went to do NYC. I want, are you listening to me? I'm, I'm being very, very gentle tonight and simple because I want you to get the practicality of what I want to deal with tonight. Expressing God's glory. Getting into what heaven has prepared for your life. Working into the divine plan that was planned for your life over the years. So we went for this NYC. Some of these senior brothers, they are Christians. They are not unbelievers. They are wonderful people. They don't know that a man of direction like me must not be tampered with anyhow. They didn't know that going for NYC for me is not a routine and it's not about anyhow. They didn't know that there was a plan that was proposed for which I have been praying for four years. Hallelujah. Some of you will soon be going to NYC and you think it's a casual year. Not a man that wants to express God's glory. Nothing is casual for you. Everything must work according to plan. Praise the Lord. So we got there. And we were in the NYC camp. And some group of Christian principals just came in. And they met us. And they said, they want all the Christian coppers. So, we were the leaders. So we went and met with them. And they said, you know, we are the Christian principals in this area. And uh, we have schools that we are principals over. We want you to give us the names of all the Christian coppers so that we will go to the NYC director and apply for him to do what? To post you to all our schools. It was looking nice. They said accommodation, no problem. Transportation, no problem. And since you are Christians, You'll be more protected if you are in a, in a Christian environment where we are. Everything looks nice. Everybody in the meeting, they were about to say yes. Something inside of me. Something inside. Any of you that is meant for something serious, something inside you will be bubbling will be bubbling night and day. Anytime you're about missing it, 
that thing will shout with a big alarm and say, you are going away. So something inside said, no. So I raised my hand. I said, excuse me, I have something to say. They said, yes, regularly, yes, yes. I said, I really appreciate all of you that are here and I thank you very much. Were you in heaven when we were posted to this place? What question is this? Everybody was confused. They said, what is he talking about? I said, number two. Have you gone to heaven to get the blueprint of each of the lives of these people? There was silence. Number three. Do you know where we are going? They said, these are questions that are difficult for any human being to answer. I said, all right. Since these questions you are not able to answer, can I suggest that you don't tamper with any of these coppers? They are on a journey. Allow them to continue their journey. But in case some people want you to take their name to the director so that they can post them to your schools, I have no objection, but not me. So take my name out. And because I was a leader, and you know, when I talk, it carries some little weight sometimes. Then the other brother said, actually, you know, some of us prayed before we came here. Uh, <laughs> Another one said, well, you know, the Spirit of God actually gave him a vision before he started coming. And he doesn't understand how it will just end like this. That's how the meeting was. Now, I want to tell you, <clears throat> in that one year, when God did things that nobody expected him to do, one of our brothers, very casual, innocent, you will not think anything good is with him. He was posted to a village. And in that village, he had a body of prayer and he was praying and he invited us to come and do a crusade in his village. And another brother, one of our brothers, also moved from that side. We gathered for a crusade. Casually like this, we were praying and preaching and we were scattered to different churches and in one of the Sunday service, one of our brothers, a copper, a crippled man was brought to church normally. And he was supposed to preach. So when he stood there, something moved in his head. But this man has to be healed today. This man has to walk here today. Then he stood up and said, look, we are not preaching. This man has to walk here today, today, before, before I preach. The people are looking at say, what is your problem? This man has been crippled since he was born. We have been carrying him to church and we are not tired. Preach to us and let's finish the service. <laughs> this young man will not preach well. He just went straight and said, look, I said you are going to walk today in the name of Jesus. Yeah, stand up. And he pulled him like this. And that's how the man never fell back again and started jumping. I was running up and down. And the whole village gathered. All that churches gathered. Wonderful thing. I can tell you, 
what several of those brothers entered into simply because we insisted that even senior brothers they don't know where we are going they don't have the blueprint of what heaven has prepared for those that love him hallelujah now because joseph brothers cannot see they lagged him to scorn in fact they said come let's kill him let's see what will become of his dream you don't kill a man that has a destiny with god to. you can't do that whatever you do to him because it's not a scalar quantity this man is a vector am, am i communicating with you whatever you do you can only push him in the direction of his journey hallelujah that's why if god be for us who can be against us if you stand and say you are doing something against i believe you are wasting your time because what you are doing is actually for me do you understand even when you can say ah he will not make it he will not make it honestly what i'm hearing you say he said hey hey let's put all our strength together so that he can make it that's the truth that's the truth because what God has prepared for them that love him it's not that God is planning to prepare it it's not that God is looking for it what did the Bible say? it's been prepared it's prepared sister that's why you know I hate it if any useless boy useless non-entity you hear me what did i call him it's a useless non-entity if he's saying if you don't marry me if you don't agree with me and uh, where can you get anything ah i say who are you what are you talking about The Lord will help you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Do you know that they carried Joseph? They sold him. They sold him for 20 pieces of silver. They ate the money. They went to the toilet. Everything finished for them. They were still on the same spot. Those who chop their tomorrow today. I hope you are not one of them. Who is eating your tomorrow today? Men who want to express his glory. They actually can go hungry today in order to conserve and preserve their tomorrow. It is because their eyes have seen a perspective they have seen beyond where they are today and they are saying god i'm going with you i'm traveling with you praise the lord can i go on quickly from there but i want to tell you that verse 10 it is that verse 10 that is taking me now to where we are going to conclude but God has done what? Has revealed them to us. 
Do you understand that now? The man that God has planned for, who will express his glory from one degree to another degree, from one level to another, something about them is that they are not ignorant of what God has prepared for them. But that's where, I want you to hear me now, this is where the cross of our meeting tonight is going to be. This is where the dimension of what we need to share and how to pray, that's where it will come tonight. I want you to know, have you agreed with me that what God has prepared for you, eyes have not seen it, ear has not heard it, it has not entered the heart of any man. Do you agree with me? Do you agree that the fact that you are small today does not tell anything about what you will be tomorrow? Eh? Do you know, do you know, I want you to know that the fact that presently in 200 levels it appears as if your great point, your GP is something like 2 and somebody is saying this girl cannot make it anywhere. Do you know that that is, that is a fantastic lie? Do you know if you understand what God has prepared for you from where you are standing today, everywhere you find yourself today, you are only passing through it. Eh? So those brothers will say, though I pass through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. You know what? You know the key. I am doing what? I'm just passing through. I'm passing through. Even when I pass through the valley, since I'm not staying there. Do you understand? Do you understand? That's the key. That's the key. But there is one matter that we have to deal with. And that's what is critical for our discussion tonight. That's great. Now look at it. It said, but God has done what? Has revealed it to us. By what? By His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things. Yea! What? The deep things of God. Brother, let me tell you. Those who decide to be superficial, those who want to dwell on the surface, those who are just like this, flat. They miss out because the things that God has prepared for you, because it is very, very precious to Him, He did not keep it loosely on the surface. Is anybody carrying Amplified Bible here today? Is there one Amplified Bible in this, in this meeting? Can you stand and read with a loud voice? Uh, Peter, help her because I know you have a pastoral voice. You will read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. It's going to read for us from the Amplified Version. 1 Corinthians 2, 10. I want you all to please listen. That is what is taking me to 2 Corinthians tonight. I am laying a foundation. I am believing God 
that several of you sitting in this meeting, you know I'm going to meet you again. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. When I will be meeting you, I'll be meeting you in your inheritances. Yeah. You see, by the grace of God, I'm not here to preach something that just excites you and after today is finished. That's not what I'm looking for. Twenty four years ago, is that eighty six to this time is just twenty four years? Twenty four years ago I'm standing on this platform in this hall speaking to students. They came for a conference, NIFES National Conference. And I'm supposed to give them an exposition. And I remembered I think there's one room behind there. That's where the preachers were sitting and we came up here and we sat. And I said, Lord, I'm seeing young lives here. Will you, oh God, give me something that for years these people, I will meet them from different parts of the world, they will never forget. I say, why not? And I remember how the Holy Spirit was speaking. And something happened. People were crying and giving their heart to Christ and all of this. And I left not knowing what had taken place. Twenty years after. Fifteen years after. I will meet someone in Cameroon and say, oh, Unibay in 1986. I went somewhere in UK. I thought nobody knew me. One very tall, hefty man stood up and said, you are my father. I said, me, no, no, not. Cannot. How can I be your father? You are so tall. He said, Unibay in 1986. This was what you said. You taught us this song. You taught us that song. From that meeting, my destiny changed. So yes. I met another, I met and I've met them all over. I went to US, I was preaching, and I was as I said, You see God. Somebody said, Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I said, What? What? I thought I have offended somebody. He said, No. He said, I want to say something now. You can't go on again. I said, What have I done? Then he, he, she collected the microphone. I said, ladies and gentlemen, 20 years ago, this was in 2006, I was in Univen, and brother came for this conference. This is what he said from that moment, my life turned. That's why you see me here. Say, brother, what you said that time is still working. I said, yes, it will work. It will work. I am being deliberate tonight because if I have a cap, I will have dusted my heart for you. Because of what I see, heaven is about to make up it. You see, what we have seen so far, what eyes of men have seen, is good. But what heaven has prepared for your life. Eyes have not seen it. People are wondering, what will it be? I say, wait. But what is the process unto getting into that as men, women of destiny sitting in this auditorium today? What is the process? I am more concerned about that process and it is that process I want to deal with. I want to pray with you over it. I want us to agree together over. Because when God will bring me back here tomorrow night, I will be trusting God to actually 
shoot you forth into that journey. Something will fall on you. You will keep running. They say, what has happened to you? Why aren't you satisfied with mediocrity? Why can't you settle down with us anymore? They say, no, 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 no. No, I have an appointment upstairs. Now, brother, read. 1 Corinthians 2.10 from Amplified Bible. Yes, to us. Maybe you read from 9. But on the contrary, on the contrary as the says, yes, what I have not seen, what I have not seen, and here has not heard, and has not entered into the heart of man, Hey, hey, hey. Are you hearing me? He prepared it and what is he doing? He's keeping it ready so that charlatans don't go near you. Charlatans. Let me inform you, Satan cannot go near it. It's being kept. Being kept. Now, see, go on to verse 10. Yes. Yes. To us. Now, I want you to mark the first word he has used there. What is that? Unveiled. Because we are going to go to Second Corinthians, where we're going to be dealing with. Unveiled faces. We are going to get to where God must do something to your face to remove the veil. When a man is living under a veil, he underestimates his life, he underestimates his potential. He underestimates his opportunities. The Holy Ghost does what? Unveils, yes. And by and the Holy Ghost himself searches out casually. Diligently, look at the Holy Spirit Himself, needing to search what God has kept for Brother Billy. That even the Holy Ghost, if He is going to discover it, how does He get it? He has to search with diligence. Diligently. If it is not a treasure, why do you have to keep it like that? I want to inform you tonight, brother. If there is nothing precious about me, why should God be keeping what He has kept that even the Holy Ghost? Even the Holy Ghost, he has to do what? Search. How? Diligently. Diligently. That's where we are coming now. Let's go ahead. Because I want to go quickly to the other place. Exploring. Do you know the meaning of exploring? Exploring. Yes, exploring everything. Yes, even sounding the profound and of God. Sounding. How many of you are reading geology here? Is there any geological geology student here? You know what we mean by by sounding. You know when you want to when you want to ascertain the depth. 
you begin to sound. Because we know that if you create a column and you want to find out how deep the water base or level is, there is a kind of sound there are different frequencies directly proportional to depth. Now look at the Holy Ghost now. Even when you couldn't get to the bottomless things, that the things of God, the things that God has in mind, they are bottomless. You know the meaning of that? That you can't get to the bottom of it. You can't get, oh Lord, please open our eyes to understand what you are planning for our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm just begging that the veil be taken away in the name of Jesus Christ. Brother, please finish that verse 10 quickly so that we can get away from that. Sounding the profound, the bottomless things of God, yes. That is the divine counsel, uh -huh. things hidden and beyond man's scrutiny. Da. Da. Hidden beyond man's scrutiny. Now, it's just because you don't understand. That's why you are taking yourself for granted. To sell yourself out cheaply. When I see some young girls, somebody just squeezing 2,000. 2,000 naira. And you are ready to spoil your destiny for 2,000 naira. I say, what do you mean by that? What does that mean? So I say, you know, I am under pressure. I say, which pressure? Can I inform you? Do you know that your present hunger is temporary? 